Hello, and welcome to the channel. I'll be your host, Jonah Vale, and this is another installment in our Mortal Online 2 help series. The idea of this video is to give you a general idea how to create a character, navigate Haven, and figure out how to get the ball rolling regardless of what you want to do in the world of Mortal Online 2. At your character creation screen is where the journey starts, and not to scare you, some of the changes you make here are permanent, for now. Fret not though, Traveler, the developers have talked about allowing race bloodline changes in the future when the game launches, but for now, during the stress test and the closed beta, these choices are final. On the screen on the left side, we can see the effect of our choices that we make on the right. You will see your clade, which is your race, and your bloodlines within that race. Your attributes current value, and in parentheses, their maximum value each individual stat can reach. And finally, at the bottom, you can see your stat pools, movement speed, as well as damage modifiers, which affects your melee damage. Also listed at the bottom are your total attribute points, which is essentially your stat cap. You can combine your stats in any way you want, as long as they don't exceed their respective individual cap or your total attribute point cap. There are racial perks that increase these caps, which we will go into in a moment. On the right hand side, we can see under the human clade, we have a plethora of racial abilities. These are all very important and can really flesh out a build or define it. Humans, for example, are considered the best jack of all trades. They can fulfill multiple roles better than other races due to having so many attribute perks within their racials. While this information is all vital, the amounts currently are not. Expect the game's meta to evolve and change at release. What is important here is that your race, bloodline, age, size, and weight all affect your stats on the left-hand side. Try adjusting all of those and seeing what changes on the left. I'm not going to tell you what to pick, but the crucial thing here is you understand what changing each of these pieces does for your character. Once you're happy with your decision and have figured out what to call your mighty adventure or not such an adventure, click create. This will then bring you to the login screen. And this is where we will enter the newbie tutorial island, Haven. Before we start the next portion of the video, I do need to give a disclaimer. What I'm about to explain is for the current iteration of Haven. The devs have said this is a placeholder, so some of this information will become dated or changed. I will do a new tutorial when that happens, but for the time being, this will do. Beginning in the world, we start with nothing but a torch, a basic sword, and the map. It's up to us to carve our way into this world and decide what we want to be. Mortal Online 2 uses a skill system called Use-Based Skill System. That implies as we do things, we get better at those things. If we press L, we can see our skill tree. On the left-hand side, action skills. On the bottom left, we can see the number states 1100 out of 1100. What this means is that we have 1100 available primary skill points to def define our action build. Skills are broken down into primaries as well as secondaries. If you wish to lock or lower a skill, all you need to do is hit the plus sign on the right and cycle through the options. There is minus, plus, and lock. Minus implies that if you hit your skill cap, another skill will lower that minus one. Plus means that it is allowed to raise, and then lock means it's not allowed to move. Now, secondaries cannot be lowered as they do not count towards your total skill cap. The same can be said for professions, which is the middle tab. Here on the bottom left, we can see we have 1,200 out of 1,200 primary profession points available to define our profession build. In Mortal Online 2, we can only have one character per account. This is to drive player interaction, as one person simply cannot do everything. You will be forced, in most cases, to rely on others to achieve your goals. Now, skills are learned initially in two ways. By doing an action that raises them, or unlocking them via book. If you remember on our map, there was a library. Let's go check that out. We can find the library located on the northwest side of Haven. It is marked with an open book on the sign. Inside, we can see a plethora of librarians. It is important to note that any books available in Haven will be available at every major lawful city in the world. There are, however, many books that you must go to specific locations to in the world to acquire. Now, each of these librarians offers different books, so it's important to check them all to see if they have what you're looking for. To start, however, 
I would highly recommend anatomy encyclopedias. This will allow your bandages to heal you for a fair chunk to start. But it seems I've left something out. We need money to buy these books or get bandages. Now, while there are multiple ways to make money in Haven, the most obvious is the graveyard. Let's head out south down the road and I'll meet up with you there. Now we are finally at the graveyard. It's currently only spawned with zombies. These are really the starter mobs of the game. Before we give them a go, let's find a couple things to our hotbar. First, let's drag a weapon to our hotbar. The sword uses sword skills and the torch uses club skills. We're going to go with a torch and a sword, because why not? And then the other important thing we need to bind is our rest skill. If you press L to open your skills and then click show all skill icons, you'll be able to see the icon over here on the top right. Simply drag that to the bar and you're good to go. That's going to be the main way we get stats back to start. Before we get in there, I'm going to explain how melee works in Mortal Online 2. We currently have four directions of attack. To unsheath your weapon, simply select it and press X. X will unsheath and resheath. We have left, right, overhead, and thrust. I suggest binding thrust and overhead in the settings to something comfortable for you and potentially adjusting the blocking style if you prefer something else. That is all done within the gameplay settings over here. And then if you wish to bind rust and overhead to something else, you can do that within the keybinds. In Mortal Online 2, you have two seconds to hold your block. And if a hit connects in those two seconds, it's a parry, allowing you to do a charged light attack back at your opponent. If you hold your block longer than two seconds, it is then a block and some of the damage will carry over and you will not be able to do the same counterattack. It is important to note that some weapons will do blunt damage and blunt damage has a unique effect of going through parry. When you swing your weapon, you can see an arrow indicating the direction of attack. The same happens for block. You can use this to learn how to control your blocks and attacks. As you hold your swing, you'll notice the charge bar happen at the middle of the screen on your crosshair. A full circle means a fully charged attack. After the circle is full, you will notice it pulses. After that pulse, damage is reduced on your attack. This means you can't run around holding an attack permanently and you need to time your attacks. While fighting zombies, or anything in general, it's very important to note that headshots are going to do more damage. Be warned, loot is not bound to anyone for mob kills. People will try to loot and push you off bodies. In the real world, we can solve this, but in Haven, you're just going to need to be quicker. As you kill mobs, you will notice you receive clade experience. This is what we use to level our racials. If you wish to apply clade points, press C, hit clade gifts on the right, and then you'll be able to apply them to your skill tree here. Currently in the game now, you can apply and unlearn as you see fit. So feel free to experiment. It's important to note the main thing you want to be looting here are the zombie heads, the gear they drop, and then the coin. Once you have a decent amount of loot or you're nearing max weight, it's time to head to town to sell off your spoils. Any vendor will accept the heads for 20 silver a pop. Simply hit your use key on the vendor, right click what you want to sell and hit accept. It's important to note that vendors will actually also exchange currency for an, a higher version. I.e. I give them this cuprum coin and they'll give me back silver. This actually saves weight, so it's good to do that whenever you can. Once you have some coin, it's entirely up to you how to spend it. As I stated earlier, the anatomy book is a solid choice to start, but maybe you fancy yourself a mage. Before diving into anything with books, you need to be aware that there are special tutors throughout Haven that will give you entry level skills through various things. This will save you some money as well as time. Near the town square, we can see there's a magic tutor. Simply talk to them and they will unlock ecumenical for you. They also, as we can see in our action skills, told us to check out mental training for magic. So they try to steer you in the right direction. But just because we unlocked ecumenical spells does not mean we can cast it. If you would like to start casting spells, the vendor here to the right will allow you to do that. Simply buy a spell book. Now you can buy regents and begin casting spells around your levels. To open your spell book, press U. Then drag the spells onto your bar and have the region on you necessary to cast. 
To target yourself with a spell, press E. To release a spell at something else, press Q. But what if you wanted to make this process go quicker? You can also learn a book while simultaneously raising the skill. Let's give a demonstration of this. Back at the library, we're going to buy the book for ecumenical spells. Once we have the book in our inventory, all we need to do is right click it. To be sure you're reading, press C to open up your character sheet, go to your paper doll, and then look in the bottom right hand corner. This is where our books are. This is a time gated skill gain. So over X amount of hours or days, the skill will raise the level stated on the book. In this example, the ecumenical book will raise it to 70. While the book is raising, we can also cast ecumenical spells to raise it there quicker. If crafting is more your thing, you can buy tools from the equipment vendor at the town square. After you get your pickaxe or axe, go outside of town and you can begin gathering. Materials can be broken down in a multitude of ways. And this guide isn't about explaining the right or the wrong way to do things. I just want to get you started. The beauty of Morlon Line 2 lies deeply in its discovery. What I will say is that south outside the city, there are a couple windmill looking objects, a crusher and a grinder. Both of these devices can be used to break down materials into different things that you can use for crafting. Simply go up to the crusher or the uh, grinder, add the resource, and hold to extract. Based on how much you grind, a timer will appear under your health bar. As we can see, since I barely did anything, I got some granum powder. If I had a larger pile, it would have broken down into more diverse materials. With those, you can begin your crafting journey. If you or a friend want to meet up but are in different haven instances, fret not. Go to the statues in the middle of the town. The statue with the flame lit is your instance. To teleport to another instance, just hold down the use key and it will relog you or your friend to the instance of your choice. Once you are comfortable in haven or feel you have your wits about you, I would suggest moving out of haven into the world. To do this, all you have to go is to any of these statues and hit the use key the same way you would to go to another haven instance. But once you leave, you cannot go back. To withdraw items from your Haven Bank when you leave Haven, all you need to do in any of the major lawful cities is find a Haven Banker. Keep in mind, you can withdraw from the Haven Banker, but you cannot deposit once you leave Haven. There is tons more to explore on Haven than what I've shown you, but do not get comfortable. Moral Online 2 is a living, breathing world, and while there is no PvP in Haven, there most certainly is in the main continent. Once you are comfortable, I suggest moving out of Haven and into the world. I really do hope this video was concise and informative enough to get you started. If you have any comments, make sure to leave them below, or if there are any other videos you would like to see in the future, leave that down there as well. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in Mortal Online 2.